Hello there, I'm Daniel Ambuil. I want to show you today something about kimchi. In Japan, they call a thing kimchi that is used widely for breeding stag beetles. And I want to show you what kimchi is and what we can do uh, with it to prepare rearing boxes for stag beetle larvae. I mean, I, br I bring a lot of material today with me. This is a kimchi block. As you can see, it has two parts. This one is filled with a sawdust of beech and is inoculated with a mushroom called Pleurotus pulmonarius. It's kind of an oyster mushroom. Here on the top you already see um, the mushroom who wants to come out of this uh, plastic bag. Um, I prepared the whole thing in my mushroom laboratory. So, of course, it's not um, a thing that you, uh, everybody can do at home. Uh, in the kitchen, and if you want to do that, you need um, uh, a spawn of, of this mushroom, a clean, sterile spawn of the mushroom, and then you can do it also uh, at home and prepare your kimchi uh, for yourself. That's the main thing. So, and um, of course, you can ask yourself why, when I open it, you will see, why do I not put this outside? and let the mushrooms grow and eat them? That's a very good question. I should do that because there can come a lot of very uh, good mushrooms out of this uh, kimchi block and it doesn't um, take away uh, nutrition from the larvae of the stag beetles when the mushroom already started growing. I think it's mostly contrary um, because the mushroom eats um, a little bit of the of the uh, sawdust, and that's not the ideal materi material for the stag beetles. I mean, kimchi is nothing else than artificial white rotten wood. Instead of waiting in the forest till a branch is infested with a mushroom until it's uh, old enough and sucked out enough by the mushroom, um, you can prepare the whole thing sterile in a laboratory under controlled uh, circumstances and that's what we have. We have a standardized white rotten wood, artificial white rotten wood and so on. That's what we need uh, to prepare uh, rearing boxes for stack people larvae. If I open the bag, I open it here so I can just, just put the upper part with the mushroom to the side because we don't need the mushroom. Why not for the stag people? Because this contains too much nutritional material and it will start rotting inside a box. And this rotting process of the proteins inside of this mushroom fruit bodies that started growing here, uh, they would... Um, they would cause a danger in the in the substrate for the stag beetle because if you know when it's uh, it start rotting under anaerobe, anaerobe circumstances, um, they can come out some uh, toxic gases out of the substrate, and that wouldn't be good for the stag beetle. So I take away practically all of the mushroom mycelium, and that thing here now that's the original white rotten wood material for the stag beetles. It's pre-digested wood, pre-digested by a uh, mushroom, and it should smell a little bit mushroomy too. And the rest here, you can throw it in the garden or wherever you want. And if you throw it in the garden, you will see that something very quickly happens. Next, let's say that you see something like this here. Did you ever see something like this here? You can also sometimes see it at places where you store your substrates, it looks like little glass marbles, um, and they have a diameter of around four millimeters. There are some people who uh, think these are uh, eggs of beetles. They are not. What do you think? What it is? Yes, of course. That's also a reason why I don't put all these bags in the garden. Otherwise, we could have. Uh, Stock in the whole thing in the garden, wait till the mushrooms appear, eat the mushrooms, and then afterwards take the block out for the beetles. But if you wait too long, there is a lot of things like this glass marbles uh, coming next to your mushrooms. Yes, this is uh, is eggs from a snail, and this is a sp special snail. And this happens often, very often, uh, around uh, white rotten uh, wood pieces that you store somewhere in your 
garden or they come they even come into a laboratory like this where there's a, a, an open spot they can grow very well in substrates like that and if you want to see the animal these are here that, that's the in Germany and in Switzerland they are called the tiger beetles or limox maximus is the latin name of this beetle they are, this is a small one this is a little bit a bigger one but they can grow to really huge animals they can be around 20 centimeters long and they can eat a lot of mushroom material they don't eat the, the wood they only eat the mushroom material and that's why they lay their eggs close to a place where they know now here my children they have good stuff to eat <laughs> so you will find this animal it's not uh, it, compared to other uh, snails in Europe, it's, um, it's not, I wouldn't say it's rare, but you don't see it so often. So you see, this is the Limox Maximus. Of course, I will, I will, I will take him out to the, to the garden where they can grow. Of course, the, if you have a mushroom farm, you don't like to see them because they eat a huge amount of, of, of your favorite mushrooms in one day, and especially then when you're sleeping at night. So. That's why I don't I don't um, place the bags outdoors so that I'm sure that everything is okay. There are not too many uh, snails in there. What I do now, I have prepared a little. This is the 500 milliliter boxes that I use for the first stages of stack beetles. Let's say for the uh, bigger ones like L1 and L2 and probably starting L3. But if they get bigger like Prosopocoelus giraffa or Dorcus uh, Titanus, or the really big ones, they need, of course, later bigger uh, containers. And also I need these uh, for uh, Lucanus cervus uh, uh, larvae, but th the substrate I compose a little bit different than for, for the other uh, larvae. If I have only the normal uh, kinchi, I just press it into the to this little container like this. And, of course, if you really want to make an artificial white rotten wood, then you have to press it uh, very hard into this uh, box because you know a hard a white rotten wood piece. This is um, this seems sometimes soft inside, and you can also take out some stuff from that white rotten wood. But it's also on the other side; it's very compressed, and that should, should is the reason why you should really compress that because the larvae they like it when it has the, the hardness of this white rotten wood and it's really compacted so and of course you have to pay attention that the plastic container doesn't break apart while pressing too much so that's the standard kimchi box for let's say a normal stack beetle from uh, especially Dorcas uh, I also I need uh, I use this for my Phalacrognathus mulleri just like this you just put the larvae in there and they grow very well as you can see on my uh, channel in this section of the plane it was Phalacrognathus mulleri you will often see this kind of uh, containers and of course they need a lid with uh, holes in it that's one of these lids with little holes in it, you probably can see I made a big one here in the middle, some smaller at the outer part, so that on the top at least there is some air exchange possible, and that's it. And you can let it grow till it's completely white, or you can put it in the fridge just to keep it cool. It doesn't kill the mushroom, the mushroom keeps on living. As long as it's this color, the mushroom is not dead, it's still living, and also it can grow mushrooms out of this material somewhere I've seen one just coming out of a box here if you if you can cut a piece away and then you see suddenly you see oh there's a, a mushroom coming out of the substrate even when I cut out the part of the bottle it's here I just cut away the upper part of a bottle because I thought there's not enough kimchi for the um, 
black beetle here anymore and you see that there are more little mushrooms coming out. You can eat them if you want, if it's from really Pleurotus pulmonarius they are, uh, uh, they, they, they taste very good. So, and of course, why do we do kinchi? Don't use this kind of beautiful white rotten wood box because this is hard to find material and if you don't know where to get it, it's easier to produce your own uh, kinchi substrate. Also, you never know what kind of wood is that? What kind of mushroom is that inside? And if you always change your uh, wood and your mushroom, uh, the larvae can get sick because she's adapted to one kind of mushroom and one kind of uh, and wood. And you, it, you have better results when you bring them up in the same material for the all their life cycle. So, and what do I do for the stag beetle? Let's say for uh, Lucanus cervus. You, what you can do also, if you want to have a substrate, that you not only use 100% of that kinchi material, but that you mix it together with um, other materials, like black soil here, for example, or like this uh, black soil mixed with leaves. So you can make your uh, mixed substrate, and you have to experiment a little bit with it to find out what is the best for your people. So for my Lucanus uh, uh, Cervus Occupationus larvae, I just mix it together with some material, of this flake soil stuff and now in this mixture I put it into the little plastic box here so why do I do that because as sometimes you find a larvae of beetles not inside of the wood but outside of the wood chewing from outside on a on a log of white rotten uh, wood so that's what we can um, make an artificial artificial uh, surrounding for them while mixing both parts together the white rotten piece and the normal earth surrounding a white rotten uh, piece of a root for example in the soil so that's mostly what some kind of uh, stag beetles like for me I think it's good, this is a good way uh, to rear the larvae of, of all the Lucanus um, species. So that's the box now with the mixture. It's, a, it's around 50% uh, mushroom infested white rotten uh, beech wood and the rest is some leaves and some uh, flake soil. So that's the whole thing. If you want to experiment with this kinchi, uh, you can try also other uh, mushrooms because you know uh, there is also there are also other mushrooms like this one here this is here's the fruit body of Gonoderma lucidum it's a very famous mushroom from China it's also growing in the same kind of of a uh, bag you know if you cut it open you will see that there are a lot of fruit bodies coming up and this brown powdery thing here that's nothing else that the spores of the mushroom and the nice thing about this mushroom is you cannot eat it as normal food, but you can prepare a very healthy tea with it. So in China you cut small slices of it, you cook it 10 minutes in hot water, in boiling water, and then you drink the tea. That gives the balance back to your jing and yang parts in the body and should, uh, it, it uh, should be a very good tonic for you. So you can keep this very nice fruit body of Ganoderma. Lucidum. You can also just let it dry and, and use it as a powder for, as an ingredient for, let's say, for your uh, curries or whatever you, you're cooking or, or for your soups to give them a little uh, mushroomy taste. Yeah. So that's another kind of mushroom. And also you can experiment with more kind of mushrooms. They also said that certain species of beetles, they only grow in kimchi made with special kind of mushroom, like for example Allotopus or Metotopus, it said they are only going in mushroom of Gonoderma or Trametis versicolor, that's another kind of a polypore beetle, 
But also, if you experiment, you will find out it's probably not true what is said all the time, because they don't even know sometimes what kind of mushroom is on a log that they find. And now here you see, this is all, it's, it looks like a sculpture of an artist, doesn't it? All this um, mushroom fruit bodies of Ganoderma lucidum that have grown in this kimchi box. Interesting thing. Also somebody said it looks like if I'm diving in a coral reef if you look at all these uh, beautiful structures of Ganoderma lucidum that have grown in that uh, box. Also of course you can now e use this kind of material of reishi uh, to prepare your kimchi boxes. And that's uh, the thing. If you want to have a standardized substrate to keep your larvae always on the same material, try uh, to make your own kimchi or buy it somewhere and experiment with that. I know that a lot of people fight for the cheapest kimchi they can get somewhere, but remember, um, doing things always costs something. Not always uh, in, the, in, 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 uh, in material, but in uh, know-how, experience, laboratory surroundings and so on. And it's sometimes better to think about what do I need for my larvae um, before you start breeding. So you can also check a little bit, do I have enough money for this kind of, this amount of, of larvae that I have or not? Or where do I find all the substrates that the larvae need for uh, their life? Thanks for watching.